In July 1969, the world froze as Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Everyone knows that moment. But what if I told you NASA didn't stop there? In just three short years, they managed to land on the moon six more times. Six landings in three years, something so ambitious that today's Artemis program has already taken decades just to prepare for one return. And hidden inside those missions are stories most people have never heard rockets struck by lightning. Near fatal mistakes. Miraculous rescues. Astronauts playing golf on lunar soil. And discoveries that rewrote the history of our solar system stay until the end because one discovery in particular will forever change the way you think about Earth's closest neighbor. Just months after Apollo 11, NASA prepared for a bold return to the moon with Apollo 12. The mission's goal was clear to prove they could land precisely on target and push lunar exploration further. But from the very beginning, things went terribly wrong. The mighty Saturn V rocket roared into the sky, straight into a thunderstorm. Just 36 seconds after liftoff, lightning struck the rocket. Warning lights flashed across the cockpit. Guidance systems failed. Mission control lost contact. 16 seconds later, another bolt of lightning hit again. The spacecraft was blind, powerless and racing upward at incredible speed. Disaster seemed certain until one quick-thinking controller remembered a single command, set SCE to AUX. The astronauts flipped the switch. Power returned, and the rocket came back to life. Against all odds, Apollo 12 continued its journey to the moon. This time, NASA achieved what Apollo 11 could not a near pinpoint landing only 180 meters from the Surveyor 3 spacecraft, for the first time, the world was about to see the moon in full color through a brand new television camera. But only minutes into the broadcast, astronaut Alan Bean accidentally pointed the camera directly at the sun. The intense light instantly burned out the fragile tubes inside. The screen went black. The color images were gone forever. But Apollo 12 was far from over. The mission still carried secrets that would change how we saw the moon. Apollo 13 was supposed to be the third successful moon landing. But halfway to the moon, everything changed in an instant. An oxygen tank inside the service module suddenly exploded. The blast crippled the spacecraft, shutting down vital systems and leaving the crew fighting for survival. Houston. We've had a problem. Those words echoed across the world. Millions of people were glued to their televisions, watching the drama unfold in real time. Inside the spacecraft, the astronauts endured freezing temperatures, dwindling power, and limited oxygen. On Earth, NASA engineers raced against time, creating improvised solutions from the few materials available on board, from building makeshift carbon dioxide filters to recalculating flight paths by hand, every choice was critical. After four tense days, Apollo 13 swung around the moon and returned safely to Earth. The crew survived, but the mission changed everything. Apollo 13 showed the world that space travel was never routine. It was dangerous. Unpredictable and always close to disaster. Yet it also proved something more powerful human ingenuity and teamwork could turn near certain tragedy into a story of survival. After the near tragedy of Apollo 13, America needed a success to restore confidence. Apollo 14 was chosen to deliver that comeback, commanded by Alan Shepard, the first American in space. This mission carried both pressure and pride. But even before reaching the moon, the crew faced another crisis. During docking, 
the command module repeatedly failed to latch onto the lunar lander. They tried again and again, six times in total, but nothing worked. If ducking failed, the moon landing would be lost forever. Shepard kept a cool head. He switched off the electronic probe and ordered his pilot to line it up manually. It worked. The two spacecraft locked together and the mission continued. Apollo 14 achieved one of the most accurate landings yet just 87 feet from the intended target. But what the world remembers most is not the technical success but a lighter moment on the lunar surface. Alan Shepard had secretly brought along the head of a six iron golf club. In front of the TV camera, he attached it to a lunar tool and swung at two golf balls. The first shot sliced. The second connected, sending the ball drifting across the lunar surface. Shepard joked that it went miles and miles, but in reality it traveled only about 40 yards. Still, that light-hearted moment of golf on the moon gave America exactly what it needed. Hope, humor, and renewed pride. By the summer of 1971, NASA was ready to transform lunar exploration. Apollo 15 carried new technology, longer stays, and bigger ambitions. For the first time, Astronauts could spend three full days on the lunar surface, and they had something revolutionary, the lunar rover. This electric, battery-powered vehicle had a top speed of 15 km per hour and a range of 90 km on one charge. With it, astronauts explored mountain ranges, ancien lava plains, and collected rocks never seen before. One of their most famous finds was the so-called Genesis Rock, a sample dating back more than 4 billion years to the early days of the solar system. Apollo 15 also gave the world a striking science lesson. Astronaut David Scott dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time on the lunar surface, without air to slow them down. Both objects fell at exactly the same speed, it was a perfect demonstration of Galileo's theory of gravity performed not in a laboratory, but on the moon itself. In April 1972, Apollo 16 set out to explore the lunar highlands, a region scientists believed was shaped by ancient volcanic activity. Astronauts John Young, Charles Duke, and Ken Mattingly carried with them the now proven lunar rover to extend their range of exploration. But what they found rewrote the story of the moon. The highlands weren't volcanic at all. Instead, the land had been pushed up by colossal asteroid impacts billions of years ago. This discovery revealed just how violent the moon's past had been, but Apollo 16 also left us with a detail that feels strangely human. When astronauts described their first encounters with lunar dust, they said it clung to their suits like powder and felt greasy to the touch. Even more surprising, they reported that lunar dust carried a distinct smell like gunpowder. It was a reminder that beyond the science and data, astronauts were experiencing the moon with all their senses. In December 1972, Apollo 17 marked the final mission of the Apollo program. By this time, public and political interest had faded, but NASA still assembled its most advanced mission yet. For the first time, a trained scientist set foot on the moon geologist Harrison Schmidt alongside Commander Eugen Cernan. He explored the Taurus Litro Valley surrounded by steep mountains and exposed ancient rock. Over three days, they traveled more than 36 kilometers using the lunar rover, venturing farther from the landing site than ever before. One of the most stunning discoveries came when Schmidt noticed patches of orange soil beneath the gray dust. Back on Earth. Scientists learned that this soil was made of tiny beads of volcanic glass formed three, six billion years ago. 
Apollo 17 returned with 110 kilograms of rock and soil samples, the largest haul of any lunar mission. But beyond the science, Apollo 17 closed an era. As Eugene Cernan prepared to leave the lunar surface, he spoke words that still echo today. We leave as we came. And, God willing, as we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Across Apollo missions, NASA left behind instruments designed to listen to the moon itself. One of the most famous was the Lunar Seismic Experiment, a seismometer to measure vibrations deep within the surface. To test it, astronauts deliberately crashed, spent lunar modules onto the moon. What the instruments recorded shocked scientists. The vibrations didn't fade quickly. They echoed for nearly an hour. Newspapers at the time described it as the moon rang like a bell. But the truth is less mystical and more scientific. Unlike Earth, the moon is dry, solid, and lacks water to absorb shock. So when struck, it vibrates for a long time like a tuning fork. This discovery gave scientists priceless insight into the moon's inner structure and it laid the foundation for future missions like Artemis, which continue to study the moon with advanced seismology from Apollo 12 to Apollo 17. These missions proved that the moon was far more than a silent grey rock. They revealed stories of danger and survival, of innovation and discovery and moments of humanity that touched the world, from rockets struck by lightning, to golf swings on lunar soil, to orange volcanic glass, billions of years old. Each mission changed our understanding of the moon, and even today, the data they gathered still guides new missions like Artemis. Now, the question is, which moment amazed you the most? Type 1 for Apollo 12's lightning, 2 for Shepard's golf shot, or 3 for the discovery of orange soil. Don't forget to like this video, share it with others, and subscribe for more untold stories from space. The Apollo era may have ended, but humanity's journey to the moon is far from over.